Okay. All right. Hey, everybody in our amazing Mormon Enlightenment Facebook group. I'm here with one of our admins, Josh Curtis. Today, um, if you didn't see my post about kind of the goal that I want to pursue within this group for 2022 is to help uh, those of you who are more fresh out, help you guys rise out of that that dark space that we all find ourselves in when we initially leave. And now we have to deal with, like, okay, what do we believe in now? Um, how do we tell our family? How do we... Uh, how do we interact with people that still believe when we feel so strong about not believing? <laughs> it's like so many different things that we have to navigate um, those few years after leaving the church that I felt like I wanted to start interviewing people like Josh, who have been out for a while, who can kind of take us back to some of the more challenging parts and tell us how you overcame certain things that at the time seemed like, oh my gosh, how am I going to how am I ever going to feel better about this? You know, especially when it comes to the family still believing family members. But just to give you guys a little background, real quick, of how I know Josh, it's actually really cool. He and I served in Germany together. We both were in the same mission back in 2002, right? Yeah, 2001 to three for me. Okay. Yeah. And so I um, never served in the same city as Josh, but we would see each other at the um, mission. We did have we did have one uh, member who was, she was baptized and she was obsessed with you. She always liked having you over to eat at her house. She was in the oh. city I was in, so quite, quite a bit there for, what was her <laughs> for name? a while. Is it Carmen? I, yeah, I think so. So <laughs> yeah. she loved you, my goodness. But, <laughs> so it was nice to see you in there because she'd uh, you come over and have lunch with her and we join you, so. Oh yeah. We're gonna no. in the district a few times. Okay, yeah, because I'm like, I remember getting together with you for certain meetings, but never actually being on the street with you. Sometimes we'd go out with the elders. Yeah, and grab a dinner or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> but it's really fun to have that connection that we both served in the same mission, knew each other then, and now being out of the church together. Like, to me, it's like really gratifying to see other people from the mission leaving we have a few others that are in the mormon yeah. group cool. as well and it's like yay because <laughs> we have that connection that background together yeah it's like some sort of weird validation you i know, know. Like, I'm okay. on right <laughs> right. so true and to know like because that's like the most the time in our lives where we were the most indoctrinated and to be oh, yeah. around each other during that time to see how we were that's how we met and then to be now out of that bubble is is really cool perspective yeah and like hey they're alive they're still okay they didn't yeah, yeah. <laughs> down by <laughs> <laughs> their family hasn't fallen apart and like all this thing that you worry about when you leave the church and that's why like you're doing these videos too because it does give you kind of that uh um the finish line of that like the the light at the end of the tunnel kind of thing that that hey there is it will be okay you know because totally. when at first when you're first going through the transition out of mormonism it does not feel okay. Yeah. It doesn't. Yeah. It feels so lonely, even though you can connect with people online and you see other people talking about it online, it still feels incredibly isolating. And that's why it, it was kind of a bummer with COVID. You know, I felt like we were in this fun flow of like getting together with Mormon enlightenment people. Um, and then 2020 happened. And then I feel like we all are feeling major isolation but yeah. I feel like getting together on Zooms can bring back that community feel that I once I felt when we first um, when we first started up the Mormon Enlightenment group where we were actually seeing people in real life. There were actually more people doing live videos and things like that. But 2020 kind of shifted a lot of things for I think so many of us. But I I really want to bring back the community aspect of it that I felt like we had in the beginning where we actually were seeing more people on video, which I think you can get to know, you can connect with people more when you're like actually talking. It feels like we're talking in person. So I want to, I want to kind of dive into, well, first um, for anyone who doesn't know you, just give everyone a little introduction of who Josh Curtis is, like your status and where you live and all that. Sure. So 
I grew up in Idaho. Uh, I was born in Utah, but moved to Idaho as a baby. So Idaho is pretty much my home. Um, pretty normal kind of upbringing there. Uh, uh, Idaho Falls is predominantly LDS. So almost all my friends were Mormon and it's very easy to follow, you know, follow the church guidelines. Most of my friends are LDS. And so we kept each other in check. And so, yeah, nothing, no issues with my upbringing. And that was great. Uh, I went to uh, Germany on my mission with you to Leipzig later on at in Berlin. Kind of interesting with our mission now. I think when we first went out, there was like six or seven missions in Germany, Austria. And now it's down to like two or three. It's oh. it's kind of crazy. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> quite a bit different over there now. Yeah. Um, but the mission was a good, good time. I, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it again, but, <laughs> but I cherish this what I did learn. I, you know, I learned to be self self-dependent, you know, how to, you know, uh, be with other cultures, learn language, you know, use the transportation. So there's a lot of uh, life lessons that I learned on my mission. The indoctrinate, I, the hard part is the indoctrination that was, that's been deep to deprogram. I know that, you know, they say the higher you are, the further you fall, you know, so between seminary uh, in high school, the mission, I went to BYU, that was four years of, 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 uh, of, uh, you know, religious classes. So yeah, that just added the mission added like another layer. So yeah. that, that was a part of it that, that was kind of tough, but at the time it was fine. It was, challenging at times as you know germany was one of the lower baptizing missions in the world in fact i think uh president nelson came i, I think he'd left already but he came to one of our big meetings and he said that it was one of the hardest missions like more people came home from that mission than almost any other mission oh really which, mostly yeah, a lot of depression things and like i think i had one baptism in two years or something yeah. and maybe one discussion a week if that so mm -hmm. there's a lot of work with much not not much uh fruit so to speak but yeah, it, yeah but the mission level, I felt like I did well I had my times where I just was done doing the mission thing and I'd just go tour a castle or, or just like like take a walk Wait, those or, are the things I wish I would have done more of I wish I wouldn't I wish I wasn't as obedient <laughs> I should have just done a little more appreciating and exploring well you know I was proselyting in the castle oh so yeah yeah, okay. yeah I know right <laughs> <laughs> but, I, I, but now now looking back there's that something we'll kind of get into that was self-care i had no clue what self-care was until i was you way don't get out of self-care on a mission i was like our self day is like why can't we even like have one day off like you really don't get a day off on pa day either oh no p day was like still meetings and eating appointments and doing laundry like there's no yeah, yeah so that was my way of staying sane if i didn't do stuff yeah. like that yeah i would have probably broken but um yeah, not too much more about the mission. I enjoy my time there, but I do have the occasional nightmare that I'm back on my mission sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's like prison, but I agree. Like I can see the positives and the things that I learned from it now. And, you know, there was a time where I was angry that I gave that, the, that 18 months to the church, 18 months of my life. But I'm like, no, I don't want to look at it that way because I really did grow a lot as a person. You know, mm -hmm. if I remove all the indoctrination part, like like you said, just learning another culture and language and all the the disciplines that you learn, I think are needing awesome. having to live with twenty four seven with someone that's not quite your yeah personality and having to adjust <laughs> to that. That was that's something worth learning. So yeah, I think that prepares you for marriage because of course you're gonna always run into those types of things in your own marriage, like things that you don't like about how the person lives or you know, it being together all the time sometimes. So you learn certain things about that kind of prepare you for a mission or for a marriage. I think that can be a good thing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so after the mission, uh, came home, went right to BYU. Um, wasn't really my first choice, but uh, I, you know, I wasn't, I've never been like a super, what do you call Peter Priested? That's not been my type. Yeah. I've always been a little bit rebellious, nothing crazy, but just my spirit, you know, and I guess it's just my just wanting to be free and be me. Um, I mean, for the most part, I followed pretty much everything in the church, but like going to BYU just felt too much. It felt like too much of the script, you know, so I was yeah. kind of pushing against it, but the price was right. and They let me in right away. So I ended up going there. Mm -hmm. I don't regret my time there. It's, you know, obviously you have the BYU culture, which is its own unique aspect of things, but I got my degree. It was a good price. I met some cool people there. So met my wife, April. Um, and how long have you guys been married? 
let's see, 2007. So it'll be 15 years oh, this year. That's awesome. Yep. So I met her my junior year or senior year, and then we had our first kid, Daxter. He uh, he's thirteen now, so we had him right when I was finishing school and I was going to uh, get ready for grad school. Um, after BYU, I went to Idaho State and got a doctorate in physical therapy. And uh, I'm I'm blessed. I've always known what I wanted to do. I've always wanted to be in medicine. So so it's nice to to not have to worry about picking a career because that can be very yeah. stressful for a lot of people. But and we are still at that. Uh, we're still pretty active at that time. Um, you know, April had some hangups with the church after she went to the temple. Uh, so she was more hesitant about going to church. Uh, oh, the, the so like right away, kind of, right away. Yeah, her. she she was fine. I mean, she had some issues with certain, like some of the misogyny. She's always kind of had an issue with that. Just kind of rubbed her wrong, even like when she was younger. But, you know, she put up with, you know, like, this is what you're supposed to do, and you still go to church, and it was fine, but when she went to the temple, it just felt so culty for her, she couldn't get over that, and so for years, she still went, but wasn't stoked about it, and, uh, you know, and I, I do my best to help, I knew that too, like, so I did my best to help her, and, well, help her, <laughs> you know, in my, yeah. in my way, but, but it was hard too, because I, I kind of felt it somewhat myself, but I was taught so ingrained, you know, you just, just do it, you know, just do all the things, accept all the callings, you know, attend all your meetings. And so, you know, if you're not reading your scriptures enough, you're not praying enough, then you feel like a failure. So that, that was kind of rough, you know, being firstly married, you know, trying to navigate your activity levels with your spouse. Yeah. And we're, so that was tough. And then, so we were mostly active but over the years, kind of a little bit less active mostly just because we had more kids and taking our kids to church was insane. Oh, <laughs> I know. I was like, so what is the hard. point? Like, we're not getting anything out of this meeting. Like, no. we're just keeping kids around the whole time. So I was like, why even go? No, but <laughs> by the time we kind of stopped going, we had four kids. And I was like, you know, I was getting no joy out of church. Like, it was just fights and getting kids ready. And they were crying. And <laughs> April didn't really want to go. And I didn't really either. But I just felt like I had to do the yeah. thing. And and it was so eventual. So we just, at one point we were trying to buy a house and I had to make some extra money. So I didn't work. I worked every Saturday for like a year to like help mm -hmm. buy our house. And uh, so I didn't have a day off. Sunday was my only day off. And I'm like, going to spend all day meetings and like, no, where are you going to go on a hike? So mm -hmm. we, after a while of doing that and not going to church, I'm like, this is much, much better. <laughs> I'm getting much more fulfillment spending Sunday going on a hike with my kids and playing games and sitting around then then the stress of church and so that's kind of where my inactivity started yeah. not so, I didn't know anything about the history and the stuff that I found out later it's more just I'm just not enjoying going it's not bringing much to my life my callings are hard the people I deal with are pain in the butt kids don't like going so that's kind of what started it of not going um oh, we lived in, we went to Las Vegas after grad school I missed that part and you're and still that was kind of right nice because we, what you're still in Vegas, right? Yeah, still in Vegas. Been here since 2012, so nine, ten years now. Mm. So that was kind of a nice break because we were out of the Mormon bubble, you know. Yeah. All of our neighbors were LDS, so so we could not go to church for a few weeks, and you know, you wouldn't have your neighbor asking where you were. You wouldn't have <laughs> yeah. people knocking on your door. You know, and people really kind of didn't bug us about our activity. Um, until I told the bishop that I couldn't take a calling because it, we'd kind of been in and out kind of going and then he was like I want to extend a calling to you and I'm like nope I can't do that which felt so hard to do because I've never ever done that oh. but it just I just like no not this time like I got just don't feel right about it you know yeah and then after that then the missionaries attacked us <laughs> so we <laughs> get missionary missionaries coming over a few weeks um it wasn't until we resigned that they stopped coming. So that's my plug. You know, if you want the mystery, stop bugging you, resign. Okay, yeah. And I, and I posted videos about that before because I was, I was like scared to death to do it, you know? Like it just felt so final. But April actually said to me, she's like, well, do you ever see yourself going back? And I'm like, hell no. Like once you see behind the curtain, you know, yeah. it's like Wizard of Oz. You see the Oz behind the curtain. Like I can't, I can't unsee that. Yeah. I can't. And it's me, even if I did want to go back, I'd have to start all over, like discussions, missionaries, 
pray, get the test. I'd have to start over. So why am I even considering myself a member of this church if I want nothing to do with it? So we resigned. I'm quit Mormon. And it's been a nice little break from anybody bothering us about it. Yeah. So how, what year was that when you resigned? That was, when did the group, the group started when I really started. I, so I stopped going, 2015 is when we kind of really, the, the, um, exclusion policy november 15th of oh. the church mm-hmm. um that's that was like felt super wrong to me so that's kind of when we really stopped stopped going um we became pretty well pretty inactive at that point um but it wasn't until about when the group started actually was that three years ago yeah it was three and a half years ago okay yeah that's about when i i think i saw one of our mission um fellow missionaries like they had, they had a, 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 a post on Facebook with like an alcoholic drink. And I'm like, whoa, oh. I, not, I forgot who it was, but I was like, I would have never not seen like you do it, like drinking alcohol. What's going on there? And like, you know, just like you left the yeah. church, you know, we've been kind of inactive. Like what's, what's your story, man? And uh, yeah, I just kind of explained to it. And they're the ones who cued me onto the CES letter. I've oh. never heard. And oh my gosh, when I read that, I, I think I stayed up all night reading it. It was just like, Cause of stuff that I kind of knew about and I'd heard about it. Like, yeah. and, but I'm like, no, I, I was told by a lot of the president Hughes, like our mission president, he was like, Oh no, that's just anti Mormon stuff. You know, that's, yeah. that's bull crap. Like, okay, got it. And like, you know, going to BYU, you know, you hear stuff. So like 90% of the stuff I'd kind of known about that was told was bull crap ended up being true and on the church's website. And it just threw, like, I threw me completely. I was like, I was a mess for like, for a few months just so diving in a, like I got that that was about four years ago do you th- yeah and then not, not not long after that I think I heard I've heard about your podcast or um because you kind of announced you're leaving on your podcast yeah about then so then I reached out to him like Crystal you too <laughs> oh my gosh I think I just assumed well because you said that you hadn't been going really regularly for quite a while I think I assumed that you knew all that information as well so I didn't know that yeah, you were kind of going through the I, untangling kind of part at the same week. time as me. No, yeah, I kind of, it was a couple of years of just not feeling right about church. Well, not like I'll go to, I'll just call them, they'd say stuff. And I'm just like, ah, that's just like a lot about how, how women are kind of like your possession kind of theme, you know, kind of, it's like, that's just felt so wrong. Like, you know, I would never consider myself misogynist like ever how, how, later now I've kind of looked back at how I've been and I was like holy shit I was like the misogyny was thick even, even though I would never consider myself but yeah it's just kind of my my upbringing and even now I'm still unpacking yeah. a lot of that stuff you know it's, it's so unaware like you don't think that you are and then you look at yourself from a different perspective and you're like oh my gosh <laughs> oh for sure yeah like I look at old posts I would make on Facebook and stuff I'm like who the heck was that <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you had to go through so what was that like though um so it, it was really intense for you then when you first started discovering yeah and it's right it's kind of crazy how intense it was because I wasn't really I wasn't really active I wasn't I didn't really care too much about going to church and stuff so yeah. it's kind of funny it just shows how deep ingrained everything was for somebody who didn't really go to church or care to go for me to fall that much and I guess because I just I really did have a deep belief in the testimony in it um that it just shocked me that I could believe so hard into this that I could just fall apart that quickly you know so it kind of shattered my reality because the church was like a pretty solid part of my life yeah and for it to crumble just like like well what's next the sun's gonna burn up is uh, the sky green like what <laughs> you know it's really oh, yeah, that's a great way to describe that feeling like you just feel it makes you feel afraid of the reality of life and like what is reality and you're just all of a sudden questioning everything not just the church you're questioning everything yeah. and that's where it gets kind of scary and that's why I, I hoped that our interviews that we do with people when they're feeling that intense like existential crisis like what are some things that you feel now being able to look back what was the most challenging part was it that that was like your initial most challenging part was the real realizing that reality is not what you thought it was and then where do you how long did it take and what do you think helped you kind of get out of that 
fearful, like crazy, overwhelming stage? Oh, yeah, that's a great question. It's been the transition. It's it's kind of like, you know, the five, like there's like five stages of death. Like leaving the church is almost like a death, right? It's like a death of part of you. I don't have it memorized, but it's like um, denial, bargaining. Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I forget. Uh, I think, but anyway. Yeah, like I know what you mean. Like ang- there's anger and like grief and denial yeah and I acceptance is last one or something so it's, it was kind of like that you know first like no way you're denial and then like like well bargaining you're like well there's this good thing about the church and they have scouts and they have it's good for the kids you know but you know so you, you go through all the steps of trying to justify it you know and that was a hard part too the main thing was the kids too I'm like well I took quite a bit out of growing up in the church like I was looking at all the positive things like the youth groups and the friends I'd make and the the leaders I look up to but then I started what about all the negative things you know like the shame culture that that's taught like the things that are more subtle that you don't realize have an impact on you yeah exactly a lot of the stuff I'm trying to unpack comes from the stuff I was taught as a youth you know like look cupcake you're dirty if you have any sexual transgression you know you're you're unholy that kind of stuff so uh, there's a lot more I can't think of right now but there's a lot that I was taught that I was young that I don't teach my kids now you know like I look at how my kids are raised, like, holy crap, this is, like, so different than how I was raised. It's, like, such more of an open dialogue um, with me and my kids compared to how I grew up. Not anything against my parents. You know, they did the best they could with what they learned. Yeah. But it's just completely different lifestyle now. Um, some things that helped, I mean, obviously, the seeing others, like, you know, in the Mormon Enlightenment group. And I really liked the group. When we started, I think, I think I joined it only a couple months after you guys started it. Yeah. There's only a couple hundred people in there. Uh-huh. So to go from that to what, 8,000 something now, it's grown like <laughs> it's grown crazy. I know. But, and it's cool to see that it just kind of validates you more like, okay, more people are leaving. Like we're not going to be the, we're not going to be like the black sheep and the minority for long. I mean, I think it will take many years, but at least we know that it's, we're not going to be such a minority in the next 20, 30 years, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Yeah. It's nice to have a build a community, you know, yeah. and especially because that's a hard part of leaving is you do, you know, you have a, that's another thing I justified too. It's like, well, it's like a community, you know, you automatically have friends when you move to a new place, you know, you join the war, you have a free moving company to use. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like I joke with April, I'm like, we'll join the church when we move just so we can get help from the, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure the missionaries will do it. They're bored right now. They're not doing much. I'm sure they'll yeah. help. Um, yeah, so it was hard to, to think about what, um, what I'm leaving behind and how to replace some of that. So some strategies, I guess, I think this is your question. I'm kind of going all over the place. Yeah, well, there's um, a lot, I think. So yeah, go all over the place. <laughs> So with, uh, you know, we, pre- we replaced, so one hour at church, we replaced with uh, um, going on hikes or doing, we always make Sunday, well, always, we, we try to make it like an outdoor, like a bike ride, go to a park, go, to, go on a hike, something like that. So instead of spending the time at church, we do it outside or something as a family. So that's kind of my replacement of church, which I feel the spirit way more with my kids in nature than I ever did in any church building. So totally that's a pause win for me um as far as uh like tithing that's a nice one you know but I but now I find I tip a lot better so, yeah so I'm not paying tithing like I guess I'm donating to you know people getting earning tips so I'm much more generous with my my tipping or or like you know donating to good causes you know like uh, charities and things like that so now I can choose where I put my charity I like of, that I do. I love that part. Somebody just posted about that in the Mormon Enlightenment group, you know, like just that money that we used to donate, like we can feel so much better about donating it the way that we choose because we know a hundred percent of that donation is going to the person or to whatever cause that you're choosing to donate. So I like that. I like, I feel much better when I, like you said, with tipping and just being more generous, you just know that it feels good to know that 100% of that is going to that person. 
Yeah, exactly. Right. And they'll, yeah. they'll do a lot better with it than, than a church putting in their stock account or billion, yeah. hundred billion or whatever. We don't, <laughs> don't need, need any it. more temples. We don't even need any no, more they don't, they don't elaborate need temples. They don't need they don't even, nobody needs to pay tithing anymore for how much money that they have. Like, they're I know. fine. Like, why don't they just say I mean, now, like, no more tithing. We're good. You guys have done great. You know? Uh, I saw some of those funny that Walmart, per, for how much they make, for how much they donate, Walmart uh, donates twice as much as the Mormon church oh. to charity than, than the LDS church. <laughs> so, oh, my gosh. So we should go sorry, on the church of Walmart instead of, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, just, it's interesting. So, yeah, I, I didn't quite. So at first I was like, I have to lose everything. But now I just kind of have replaced things like, you know, praying. I would pray once or twice a day. But now I, I change that to meditation. So which kind of is what praying is. Yeah. You know, if you think about it. And you know, it is, I it's agree. It's, it's less uh, formal, though. Like for me, when I think about my, uh, my meditation being a prayer, I, I enjoy it more because I don't feel like there's so many rules like, oh, I got to I got to be on my knees or I got to start with dear Heavenly Father and make sure that I close it out this way. I love that it can just be more free. I, I get more out of it than I used to with prayers. Prayers were always just very repetitive for me. I know mm -hmm. they're not supposed to, but I just never could get out of the 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 rules. Of yep. It. <laughs> yep, exactly. Uh, so I placed prayers of meditation. Um, oh, I was going to say, there's another thought in my mind. Oh, I forgot what it was. But yeah, just kind of replacing, replacing things. Replacing things. Yeah, I like Oh, that. like for the kids, like, so they don't, like, scouts, we, we kind of did that for a bit. My son wasn't really into scouts. So instead of scouts, like, um, I make sure I always do, like, a camping trip or two with the kids uh, every year, uh -huh. you know, and teach, you know, teach them what I, because I'm an Eagle Scout, so I, whatever I learned, you know, um, yeah. not and stuff like that. So, so I still try to give them that education when they can. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, they, they do a little, they spend a little more time with sports and dance and things like that since they don't have to. So just making sure they're involved um, in the yeah. community. Do you feel like, um, have there been like moments where you feel like, unsure of your parenting style because you no longer have the guidelines of the church yeah no actually i don't no we that's what luckily been a well i mean the, the guidelines have kind of the guidelines you use or what, what i what i learned from the church as far as being a good person and treating others with respect and stuff i've, I've carried that on but that's kind of just a human nature golden rule type of thing the church doesn't own uh, not be well you know that's that's kind of a <laughs> yeah. everybody, everybody should be doing that so yeah. yeah it and my kids are pretty little when it, i think we stopped going my oldest was eight um so i didn't have to deal with all having teenagers and with little kids so no i i don't have too much to add to that we so none of your kids got baptized then no and that well that was one reason i really kind of looked into things because he was oh, eight and yeah. i was starting to kind of have some doubts and i'm like do i really want to sign him up for this so i i, I you know like I, I prayed and fasted about it <laughs> it was like nothing was happening nothing was coming to me and i so i started you know diving into things a little more really looking at it and that's when i found out i couldn't really go back so yeah him and the whole baptizing kids at eight well, looking at what he knew i'm like there's no way he knows enough about what the church is really about for him to make a decision like he chose to do that. no he doesn't yeah he could understand half the stuff he's going to be signing up for so i'm not going to sign up for this so no he we didn't get baptized it just didn't feel right and luckily that was about the time we we transitioned out but yeah so we i guess our kids were little enough that we didn't have to we've kind of developed our own parenting aspect and you know instead of teaching them about the holy ghost and listen to the spirit i tell them listen to yourself because that's essentially what the holy ghost like that still small voice yeah it's just your inner eye your inner ego your, your inner self you're telling you things you know that's, that's just my belief you know some people still believe in the holy ghost that's that's fine but i i was kind of stuck when i left and like i have I don't believe in the Holy Ghost anymore. So how am I going to know right from wrong? You know, like what's, how am I ever going to make a good choice? So to me, I had to like really dive deep into that. And like, oh, I actually I've known right and wrong all from all along, you know, and that inner voice was just me, you know, 
So identifying with that was a big key. So I teach my kids that, you know, you know, instead of heaven and hell and the Holy Ghost, we similar concepts, but just don't have names to it really. Yeah. So do they ever have questions about like heaven and hell and Jesus and anything like that, that feel like you're, un- you're unsure of a way to answer that? No, we don't bring, we don't tell them about it. To them, it's kind of, heaven and hell is kind of like a fairy tale kind of thing. Uh, in fact, my, my daughter the other day, she was, she saw an angel and I was like, she's like three. I was like, what is that? She's like, oh, it's a fairy tale. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's cute. I was like, well, you're kind of right. And I, <laughs> I guess I, I should try to kind of look, explain a little bit about my beliefs now. Yeah. Uh, kind of dove in a little bit without saying it so at first I was kind of pretty um staying with Christianity you know I was like I still believe in Jesus and everything but it it kind of fell the baby fell out with the bathwater kind of thing like if I believe that hard in Mormonism what's to say that these other stories that are just as audacious aren't true yeah. aren't false you know the baby so, Jesus baby Jesus went out with the bathwater baby Jesus went out with the bathwater yeah <laughs> I, I I I believe he's probably real he's probably a good person but so was Muhammad, you know, so was Gandhi, so was the, the Dalai Lama. Like, there's plenty of good people in the world. You know, I don't need to describe this one that saved me, you know. That's just my, that's just my opinion. Um, that's where I'm I, at, too. I'm exactly there. Like, I think that he existed and he was a good person and probably did some cool things. But no longer can I get with the whole story of him, you know, that's in the Bible. Yeah, exactly. I have to go to my car my phone's gonna die so i'm gonna plug it in but um yeah so we i kind of was with christianity for a while and then uh just came more agnostic so that's where i'm at i I wouldn't say i'm atheist i don't believe that there's a guy with a a male with a white beard sitting on a throne you know Mm -hmm. um but i do uh there's something out there some sort of higher power energy I, just, I really think that we, as our, with our human minds, can't even wrap our heads around what, what it really is. Um, I think we just give them a name and a face just to make ourselves feel better. Yeah. But, I don't know. I, I think a lot of that power is in all of us, too. So which, which kind of them want to teach, too, you know, that we can each become gods. I don't know if they will say that anymore, but that's what they've taught. But the fact that, um, you know, we can, says there is divine... In, um, divinity in all of us so yeah I like that I can totally relate to that as well so last thing I wanted to ask you before we finish up was do you have um a lot of believing family members still and how do you navigate that yeah we do we haven't really been super public about um our transition out not that we're scared of like an outfall or anything yeah but we're not, I guess, out of respect, I think. I, part of me wants to scream it on the rooftops, you know, just to help other people get out of the church. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that's my own selfish um, thoughts. But I know that a lot of people have like an existential crisis, you know, with that kind of thing. So we, we, if, we don't like announce it. And if people tell us, we'll explain to them. I don't usually go into my reasons for leaving the church unless uh they ask for it but overall we haven't had too many super negative i think a lot of people think it's gonna be way worse than it is um the family members we have told haven't really um cared too much or like nobody's freaked out on us or shunned us or shamed us like some people have tried to they'll sell share share more scriptures with us and articles and things like that yeah (laughs) trying to do their mission uh, work (laughs) yeah they're doing mission but nobody's been super so i think that a lot of people's fear of telling their family is kind of founded that the church they they breed that they they teach that you know like Mm -hmm. so the fear is unfounded you know we we get a lot of ideas in our head of how bad it's going to be so i'd say i tell people that like if they are scared of a family member's knowing then it's not it's not as bad as you nearly think it is you know so you know try to calm down a little bit with that you know roll as roll as you can if you're the type that needs to let everybody know at once that's fine but um no unfortunately there are some rough situations for people um but i think overall it's 
probably doesn't have quite as bad as you may think. Yeah. So just some, some encouragement there. I agree. I like that because I think that there is a lot of fear around telling, being open about it. But I also think we create a lot of it in our minds. We um, think that they're judging us more than they actually are. We right. think that they're um, that they actually see us as evil, which you know, some I I know a lot of people have had experiences like that with their own family members, you know, saying you've lost the light, and I, uh, you know, there's I'm so sad for you, and making you feel small, and I think that. Um, well, that that's all goes back to because I think they ultimately feel this. They have their doubts too. I think everybody does to some extent. And yeah. By you leaving, you're free. So they're almost jealous that you're free from it, that you can express your doubts, that you can fully go into it, and they can't. So that's that's yeah. what I feel like. A lot of people, those reactions are that's where it comes from. I totally agree. And they are afraid of what they don't know. Everybody's curious, you know, like subconsciously I think everybody's curious like about you know being free but it's also a scary thing because I love Brene's Brene Brown's quote about that that it's only when we are willing to go into the darkness do we discover our light and it does it is scary because you feel like you really are stepping into darkness and that's what the church always tells you (gasps) you're gonna go it's gonna be like outer darkness for you, you know, and so you're scared of that, but what if we stop being afraid of the darkness and just know that that is part of it, part of, you know, finding that inner light is to go through a period of darkness and just let it be dark for a while, because I think that was what happened to me when I first started feeling like this fear and darkness. I was like, it's happening. I've been totally overcome by Satan and everything that the church predicted would happen if you if you um, start reading the anti-Mormon stuff or if you ever leave, like all that's going to happen. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's it's true. It's coming true. But what I didn't realize after give, giving it some time that that's okay. That actually is a tremendous sign of growth for you to be able to wade through the darkness until you can discover that light yourself instead of just believing that the light is there it's almost like you have to go into the darkness and find the light yourself and we didn't know that we were capable of finding that light ourselves we just thought like we got to just believe in the light believe what the church tells us but we never really knew what that transition what that feels like to go into the darkness and find the light yeah kind of like what you're saying it's like hold to the rod my april always uh says okay for me now it's like it's switched i'm in the building like with my friends you know like having a good life, looking over at people holding onto the rod, not wanting to look over the building, just look at the tree, and we're like over there shouting, "Let go of the rod! It's <laughs> yeah. not that bad. Come to the building. It's kind of fun over Don't here. Don't eat the fruit. Don't eat the fruit. Yeah. <laughs> so like I, I'm I'm proud to say that I'm in the great spacious building, and it's and I'm doing and it's fun. fun. It's, I'm it's, and- it's like it's funny how they describe it too. It's like they're laughing, they're having fun. It's like. Like that's a bad thing. Like they're not supposed yeah. to be laughing and having loud fun. laughter, loud laughter, and speaking evil of the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh well, yeah. I think that that's a good point. That sometimes we fear, we get on our heads more about um, what the family is thinking of us. When if we can kind of just take a step back and and see it from the broader perspective, knowing that they are afraid of you because they've been told you know what happens to people who leave the church so there's that fear that's like so deeply ingrained in them and that's their reality that's what they see but it is nothing personal it's only their own fears that they're projecting onto you so if we just kind of look at it from the realization that they are still wearing their mormon glasses and we don't it's not our job to take those mormon glasses off because they they're gonna have to come to that own, that realization on their own. And so I really liked what you said, because I feel like in the beginning, Sean and I felt really charged to um, start this movement of people speaking up and, you know, doing, well, I still, I feel like the Freedom Day post can be very liberating to do that if you feel like it's right, but make sure that it's not coming from your ego. Like you said, like, you know, that by you trying to convince other people to leave, it's really only to feed your ego to validate you that you're right. 
And that's really not a place that we should be doing it from. We should be doing it from a place of, I just want to, this is my step to be liberated for myself. I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything because when we are in that space of trying to convince, that's one thing that I would say that has been our greatest um, lesson throughout this process is we felt like we were doing this really good thing by trying, it was almost like we were trying to convert people out of the church and forcing it and, and doing exactly what the Mormon church is doing is like we turned into Mormons on the outside, you know, trying to convert people to our side. But I'm like, oh my gosh, like we had it all wrong. I do believe in speaking up and, and sharing your truth. But as long as it's coming from a place of, I just need to express this. I need to get it out there instead of coming from a place of, I want to make sure you guys know that I'm right and you're wrong. And you guys, it's way better over here. And be mindful of the people, like you said, I thought it was really important to be mindful of the people that, you know, may not be ready for such a um, transition in their life. You know, the existential crisis can be so devastating that not everybody can handle that. And so being sensitive to where people are at spiritually or what they can handle emotionally. There are some people who are who are better off in the church. I know I know a few people that the structure they need that structure. Yeah. They need to be told this is what you do, this is what you don't. So those people I I have no desire to really talk to about into anti Mormon stuff with them, you know. So Yeah. It, but yeah, it is important to, I, I think it's important to be yourself and be open because there are some who may have doubts like uh you know that, that you could help and you know Yeah, and by speaking out you're finding this Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Like, and, and knowing that you're speaking to those people that are maybe still too afraid to be authentic, be their authentic selves. And by you doing that, you are paving the way for others to, to be able to make that big choice or big life decision. But it's just, I think, being aware of where you're coming from. And we were definitely coming from a place of ego, wanting to convert people to our ways. You know, but partially, yes, wanting to pave the way for others, but I know there's still a lot of ego involved. Like, I want people to leave, and I want them to know that they're wrong and all of that, you know, and I just don't think that that's a healthy place to come from because it only left me feeling angry and upset that more people weren't leaving and more people weren't seeing that we were right and they were wrong, you know, yeah, yeah. but I don't want to see life in that way. I don't want to, because I think that's what causes us our own stress and suffering is when we think that we have to there has to be a right and a wrong and everybody should be doing what's right but it's like once you start diving into all the different religions and all the things that people are teaching what we think are is truth you start to realize that it that's really a hard thing to define what is truth you know oh yeah because it's so it's not rarely is it black and white you know there's and we want to Literally. think black and light, white as Mormon, like being coming from we our. Do. I know Mormon the church background. is true, the one and only true church on the face. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so that is that's been the hardest thing for me to let go of as uh, leaving the church with my indoctrinated Mormon brain, still thinking that everything is black and white and wanting to believe that it's black and white and trying to find the truth and what's not true and trying to break it up into two things and it's just impossible i've come to realize it's impossible oh, it yeah you drive yourself crazy trying to yeah. compartmentalize everything it's, it doesn't work <laughs> yeah i've just taken a lot of truth and i've gotten more into like kind of like motivational kind of speaking like uh books or or sayings or, or people who i mean there's so much you can add, you can get there's so much you can add in your life from different aspects of life you know there's so i anything positive that helps me grow i'm all into you know it doesn't really matter where it's coming from too much. Um, you know, there's, there's aspects of, of Mormonism that I still find are helpful, you know, so it's, there's, there's good things everywhere. And if it is good worthy or praiseworthy, we seek after these things. <laughs> good, good report or praiseworthy, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I love that. Well, this has been fun. I really enjoy talking about uh, the process of, of leaving more so than I do. I used to want to hear like, how did you first start realizing that the church wasn't true? Like I wanted to really know about that whole story. And that's what Mormon stories really filled that for me 
being able to see how so many people came to that conclusion in in different ways. Yeah. But and now I'm kind of left with now what now what yeah I mean? now I'm like I want to know okay now it's been a few years you've been out what what has changed for you how have oh. you been able to unravel all that? Also, one thing I did uh, I went through counseling too for a while. Um, I just realized I I unpacked a lot with the church and then I started unpacking a lot of inner issues or experience I've had when I was younger that maybe have been a positive thing for me now. So, so I do want to give a shout out for mental health, you know, don't be afraid to get a counselor. It like, doesn't hurt to even just go see one and see what they think, you know, but they, they can really do wonders and help you, uh, you know, get on the right track. So, you know, there's some good self-help books and too, but I think being with a person and speaking with them, finding someone you trust that understands you and you have to find the right person too. The first couple people I went to, they almost wanted me to join another religion. Like when I um, said I was kind of Mormonism, they were kind of like, one lady was like all about Christian based. I'm like, nope, I need to find someone who, like, I don't want anything about religion. If I want yeah. religion, I know where to go. I want, so yeah, find the right person. That's one thing. But if you do, then that can be a great resource if you have access to mental health stuff. I really, I agree. I've, I've worked with a lot of different people as well with my own mental health. And there is something about, you know, you can read a lot in a book, but sometimes you really just need to like dive deeper into your own personal things that you can't really do when you're reading a book and you need somebody to help you dig, you know, like, Hey, where's this coming from? And that's what I I've been able to find a lot of healing and growth by having another person and it's mostly been Sean my own husband just helping me like dig deeper like okay hey, where is this oh yeah from? April's helped me tremendously she's been a it was, it was it's kind of funny because she was already done by the time I was like hey I'm trying to tell her like look at this and all that she's like I don't want to hear it she's kind of already she's done her own and I feel bad because she did this all this process on herself I was not open books to her and I feel so bad about that now that I was so as I was trying to get her to go to the church she was trying to leave so I was not a good safe place for her to be during that moment. So she's incredibly strong that she can go through that on her own. Um, yeah. So, but she's been very helpful. She doesn't want to hear any of the negative stuff. She's so when, when like, you know, negative posts about the church and stuff, she doesn't like to see that. She's like, I, she's past that point. Yeah. And you know, I'm, I am too. Like I, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't trigger me, but I don't need that anymore. I understand mm -hmm. how some people do. And that's, and I guess that's where one thing with the, that was different with Mormon enlightenment, I was so happy about is I was in some other groups and it's just all just kind of negative and like, that's, you know, I get it. You know, the, the part of the growth process made the anger part. Yeah. But you can't stay in that phase. You know, you've got to get to the acceptance phase. So totally. I, I feel the longer you stay in the anger phase, it's not, that's not helping you grow. That's not very positive. So now true. It's, more of, it's not anger. It's more of laughing. Like, okay, whatever. Yeah. But, and that was a nice thing with more enlightenment. It was less of that. I hate the church. You know, it was more of like, Hey, let's get out of this. And, and so I think people sometimes still get mad if we delete posts that are kind of, you know, more in that. We don't really do that. We don't believe if it's, if it's egregious or really far out there. If know. it's, if it's like really stirring up a lot of controversy, that's where we feel like we need to step in just because yeah, we're trying to keep the group both kind. <laughs> Yeah, it's mostly to keep the group safe because if there's too many reported comments or name calling, then they can shut the group down, you know? So yeah. as people watching this, I want them to know that too, that if things are deleted, it's not as trying to censor people. Like you were growing up, we could say what we want, but we get notifications from Facebook that it's a, it's a violation against, and we get a lot because uh, anything, if you say Mormonism or Mormons are or something like that, then you're making fun of a group, you know, or you, you're, uh, being biased or I forgot the word they use so yeah any posts that kind of bring up a lot of that uh, yeah. ire we kind of get rid of just because to keep the group safe not to censor people yeah that's so good that you that like, out oh you're yeah. censoring us it's like no oh, we don't. no we're just trying we're to keep the group alive because we don't own Facebook and we just want to keep our group within Facebook so we have to kind of play by their rules but yeah. also to minimize the the it's like we as admins and moderators, we just, our job is to put out some fires from time to time. And if something that somebody said is stirring up, is like 
creating this huge flame, like we have to put it out. And the only way to put it out is to delete the whole thing altogether. So like you said, we're not trying to censor people. We're just trying to not let the whole group burn, burn down. <laughs> right. And I, I think we get, uh, forgot the numbers, something like 70 posts a day or something like that. And so really like the you know, posts that are get deleted, it's like less than 1%, like comments mm -hmm. and posts, like it's very, very minimal. So it's just funny when people like label us as like controlling and like we're acting like the church trying to like, oh guys, Not the reason. yeah, <laughs> we're trying to keep things smooth. That's all. <laughs> exactly. So I hope everybody can understand that we're just trying to keep this a nice safe space for everybody. Yeah, but everybody. That's hard. Everybody's different places and different yeah different places stages beliefs backgrounds so it is really hard to be unified in a sense yeah <laughs> but i do like that it's focused on growth that's that's awesome because we all need that yeah well thank you again for all the time that you devote to the group being an admin and you know helping us all out because you know being an admin and moderator does is all it's all service based, you know, you accepted the calling, we're not paying you. <laughs> and we're just trying to do the best we can with our limited amount of time that we have to devote to this, but we enjoy it. I think you enjoy it like I do. We enjoy being a part of the community, even though we feel like we've been able to step out of certain phases that everyone has to go through. Um, we still feel um, an enjoyment out of serving the community. And that's kind of yeah. What... But maybe maybe more and more enlightenment is my uh, replacement for the church community. This is my yeah. yeah, yeah. And hopefully we can start planning some group, you know, meetups and stuff sometime again when when hopefully I don't know. I I keep saying when COVID is over, but it's like, do we know if it's going to be over? Uh, <laughs> like when when we're all not going to get deathly sick, which is happening. It's like hopefully I think it's getting less scary so hope yeah there. Hope. yeah okay well thanks again josh this has been a lot of fun to just have a conversation with you because i i really like to see what how you've grown and some of the things that you've learned over the past few years since you've left yeah thanks for having me it's good talk yeah all right we'll be in touch in the group all right Bye. okay see ya